And uh, our goal is to be a world leading leader and a solution provider. So we have a hardware and a software team in the RD department. And uh, today's topic is about uh, ITX, V2X. And uh, because we have many lengthy cases in China, over um, to, um, 25 cities. So that's the reason. Um, so we, 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 we like to share our experience. Yeah. And uh, to benefit the more, uh, in, more industries with, with a lot of solution. Yeah. Well, thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, so today, basically, we'll have you know, similar three sections as we normally do. With the difference that relation, a presentation will be the major one, uh, followed by our awesome Gary. We'll close um, with application stories and some embedded uh, tech and information. As for myself, I decided not to bother you with too much financial business information. So I'll quickly go through some basics that might be interesting for new guests and that Lation and Gary to take over. Um, by the way, everyone, please turn off your microphone once, once again, uh, just to keep the connection clear. If any questions raised during the webinar, please send them through the chat. After each segment, we'll ask you um, if you need any clarifications. And at the end, as always, a quick Q&A in case you wish uh, to have additional information. Okay? So here we go. Um, the first, Doi, before we begin uh, with my part, I'd like to ask maybe a quick question about LiDAR technologies. So when it comes to embedded products, we are constantly facing market challenges and overall uh, fast-pacing innovations. What about LiDAR tech? From your experience, any changes or challenges you see uh, when it comes to lidars or transportation projects you're working on? Uh, yes, uh, in lidar technology, um, actually we developed from two, um, 2D and the 2 3D. Um, in 3D lidars, um, maybe everyone uh, we are very familiar with the uh, first generation of the 3D lidar technology yes. is the mechanical lidar. And this problem of the lidar is about the very high cost. Because in the, due to the internal design, and they will spend all of time to do the tabulation. And uh, the lifetime is uh, less than one year. So I think it is uh, greatly limited the use in uh, um, transportation. And then we come to the second generation of the 3D LiDAR. And we go to a um, hybrid solid state LiDAR or, or totally solid LiDAR. Yeah. This LiDAR um, is quite a bit, uh, very suitable for outdoor use because when we fit it in a light pole and the exposure to the sunlight is very, very hot. Yeah. So this LiDAR, um, we can withstand the, um, the, the high temperature and the lifetime we can go to the three years. Yeah. So, uh, in technology speaking, it's more suitable now. And the bottom price, um, because in transportation, we need to fix the light around the world, and so the cost is a very um, is a one big problem. So now actually uh, more and more company and the light company and have their own um, uh, IC group to design on some IC mode. So in that way, we can make a lighter the performance more stable and the more affordable. So. And so that's the reason we think um, LiDAR will be more popular uh, in the ITS setting. And in China, you know, uh, and the uh, government is very uh, enthusiastic to the LiDAR user in the, uh, in, in, in the infrastructure. So with the um, output um, of these models are growing very fast. So we think that's also looking um, and reason to to make the light more affordable. Yes. And the uh, third question I think is about the um, local solution. Uh, for example, uh, in Malaysia, I visited this country before and they told me and uh, this country, uh, they have the government regulation how to um, ETC and how to charge uh, this uh, highway. So, um, so maybe we think uh, we did some um, Local support, yes. So um, in, in the fourth, um, for this um, about the um, market size, and uh, um, I do, I found many um, third party reports just uh, show the increase of the the lidar sensor. I think in the following three or five years, it's almost a one hundred percent increase. Yeah. 
So I think all this um, phenomena can benefit Snell LIDAR and its, its solutions. Very impressive. Uh, thanks, my gentlemen. You know, I appreciate Alation and Zoe over here. As you can see, you know, she is professional in her field. And they have uh, numerous projects, not only in China, but globally, uh, especially in Asia and, and Europe. So please feel free to ask yourselves to get contacts with Zoe and she can share more information. So uh, anyways, if you don't mind, uh, I'll go quickly with my part and then we'll have you know, more uh, from Zoe, okay? Please, uh, those who joined the webinars during last sessions probably saw the slides already, but for our new partners, I'd like to you know, have a few uh, market directions that we're using as our guidance when developing new solutions. Uh, we're in business of age computing, so we are overseeing everything that is happening in our segment. Unfortunately or fortunately, uh, barriers between various industries are becoming more and more blurred. As you can see, age computing market overall is growing steadily. And with advancement in telecom, like a uh, launch of 5G, the market itself started to grow even more exponentially. Despite this fact, industry niche-wise, uh, it stays uh, within the same framework, with energy, industrial and transportation verticals being the major directions, uh, which makes sense. Uh, this the largest drivers of economies and uh, budget allocation goes normally to those directions first. As we constantly remind our partners, we are hardware developers first. If we know in which we do very well. At the same time, we cannot do our job without very deep partnership with our technology developers. Uh, on the right graph, I'd like to point that we believe our end customers and partners are mostly service-oriented firms, focusing on integration, uh, which pushes us further in collaboration with companies like Lation uh, to grow our ecosystem in software and connectivity aspects. Again, that is, that is beaten up um, with major trends being uh, related towards uh, traveler information, traffic management, and public transportation. Before the whole market can fully focus on autonomous driving, the priority will be always a safety and convenience of public infrastructure. Uh, within intelligent transportation, we do focus mostly on the road type industries. That's why, like the last you know, three, four webinars, it's about the highway type projects. Everything that is moving and has to be monitored or analyzed. Economy requires moving goods around, delivering on time and at the proper quality and quantity. From our experience, system integrators started originally with basic content optimization and location services. And step by step, like right now, it's all about RUD, AIT, and video analytics. At the same time, you know, what's interesting is that despite we talk about transportation, same algorithms, solutions, and business models are spread in all the industries. So even today, the topic is about um, LiDAR tech in ITC, let's say highway type or video monitoring. At the same time, the same algorithm, the same products can be used in various and various industries as not about transportation. Our discussion uh, with clients and direct work on uh, ITC projects, we see that despite there are many potential challenges and difficulties, whether business or technical, there are a few that are constantly being spoken about, such as um, too much data without the value. Everybody talk about um, the big data, but only a few are working on actually making sense of that uh, raw material. Raw products can store and send to the cloud massive amount of raw information, all that metadata, but without a purpose, it's nothing. So we prefer to work with partners who understand that data can show them. Like um, in case of LIDARs, data is a waste unless you have a purpose for it. So goal-driven analytics is the way to go. Second is unclear monetization schemes. I spoke about this before, but um, anyway, we are glad when our sales goes up. And honestly speaking, you know, clients are buying more and more products is good. But we are also carefully analyzing where our products are used and where they're going to. Uh, maybe about 20 years ago, there were so much money pumped into infrastructure upgrades and security upgrades. Now, with cameras everywhere, uh, embedded PC everywhere, nobody knows what it's for sometimes. So we are very excited when we see partners are building a project not only for one-time installation, but uh, the one that really is solving the problem, that they're providing a solution, which means this project will be constantly updated. Third privacy issue, uh, we're facing this in you know, a challenge more and more recently. 
item this complex topic whether with edge products or video monitoring even with slider data there's the privacy concern right nobody want to uh, see themselves somewhere on the cloud all the time and going back a few slides before um we have to remind our partners about this and direct them towards quality solutions dedicated to solving the issue there are great companies uh, coming up with encrypted routers and intel itself has amazing solutions with hardware encryption virtualization technologies helping to tackle the problem so please you know uh speak to gary further ask our pms or your sales uh to get more information on let's say, how to protect your projects okay whether it's with intel solutions or maybe with additional uh, communication routers that we can help you guys with uh, bandwidth limitations this might just still you know an issue um show the need for paying more attention to data analysis and focus focus, but it's kind of going down, you know, 5G is solving many of those issues. Uh, next one is no fixed topology. I'm sure you had experience with clients uh, are asking to upgrade the system based on old and obsolete topology. Despite high cost of embedded products um, in comparison to cheaper but less customizable dedicated boards, embedded computing is actually a much more cost saving and high CP value product when thinking about long term. So financially, you know, embedded PC is much more, you know, feasible than even um, a cheaper, but like single oriented uh, box. The last one, decentralization. Everybody's speaking about this recently, but um, this is just being be a bit more you know, careful. It's back to security and technology. Choose the partner who has many other partners as the key. Uh, collaboration between suppliers and project developers is very important to mitigate the risk. That's why when you know our sales look into you and asking more information about the project it's not just you know to get to know you and what you're doing it's actually helping us to understand how can we help how can we design a better solution how can we you know um get better partnerships for your products right so if you know that you're in a particular area that your project require particular security you know um concerns maybe uh, analytics or some performance um difficulties that you need to save Please, you know, be open to yourselves, okay? Don't just discuss, you know, the embedded box and technology. As remember, we mentioned before some major drivers that pull a project to start. Um, this is an example of major directions that we suggest our partners to develop. As we see this, the most return on investment. Government funds have to be located um, in a certain way whether it's uh, India, Europe, you know, Latin America, or in other country. And private sector is mostly looking for optimization and cost reduction. And to make this short, IDC market is incredibly exciting and still has lots of problems to solve and lots of solutions to develop. Whether it's a road, edge computing, cloud solutions, traffic and cargo monitoring, custom clearance based on LiDAR weight measurement, for passenger protection in case of car collisions. I feel this is a never ending direction. That's why I'll step back today and give more space for a partner relation. As I believe that other tech actually is becoming a really must product for any infrastructure and transportation development globally. So uh, I'm really excited about uh, hearing from them. This is a slide that relation, you know, I uh, shared with us, as you can see, uh, there's a little, you know, breakdown of LiDAR application market. We have numbers over here, but uh, majority of the data that comes from their information is similar to what I uh, gave you a few slides before. It's a uh, ADS vehicle, a robotic vehicle, confined spaces in our space and agriculture. Today we are more focusing more on ADS and the robotic vehicles. But as you can see, it's growing rapidly. So it's the impact regulation. Uh, guys, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm kind of breaking up and giving more space to Zoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Joe. <laughs> Zoe, can you see the slide? Uh, yes, this is our slide. Right yeah. now, uh, I'm sure. So you have the right to basically uh, use the slides on your own, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Go ahead, Zoe. So you, you will change the slide for me, yes? Up to you, sure I can do. Okay. 
Okay, now today's um, we focus um, ITSC is a um, very important um, uh, section, and uh, today we focus on V2X application. Yeah, so we get to the next page. Okay, our company um, for those six years, and uh, we have two factories. And one fit foot in, in Shenzhen um, for Bob Tiger uh, Light. And uh, we have a new factory in Shuzhou. Shuzhou is foot for automotive grade lighters. Yeah. And our headquarters base in Shenzhen. Yes. Yeah, let's pay. Okay, this is the ITH principle and the VTX. Um, you can say this is, this is a sensor. This is a uh, first generation of sensor I mentioned before. And this is a camera. And uh, normally, we many cases focus on the um, the, the world course, yeah. And uh, then we can um, use the um, wireless or Fragi to do the real time communication, yeah. So the page, yes. And now what we offered now is about the lighter and the camera, and uh, we have uh, a fusing algorithm together. So this is is a one total package we can offer to customer. Now we have a, a landing case in, first of all, our landing case is in Netherlands, overseas market. And uh, so we sending this um, this equipment to ship to them. And then uh, folks uh, fix this uh, um, part and the light pole. And this is uh, our algorithm embedded in this IPC. Yes, so um, then, so customer will to tell customer and do the infrastructure and then they can follow us um, step by step. Yeah. If you like to communicate with a vehicle, so maybe you did the OBU uh, from a vehicle. And also this uh, um, since, um, data can transfer to the traffic control center or connect it to the other IoT uh, devices. Yeah. So we can go to this page. Okay, actually they have two kind of the architecture we, we printed to customer for the reference. And uh, if your customer have any question, I'm unsure, certain, and uh, you can come out to our um, technicians and tell us, um, take some picture of your local places and tell what equipment you have. So we can recommend which one is more suitable to you. Yeah, this is about the architecture. So get to this page. Okay, this uh, this is about the lidar. Lidar, we now we we have the uh, this is the first generation of lidar. We fixed this um, kit three years ago in China. At that time, uh, this is 32 slider. Yeah. Then we go to the this is the hyper solid state 32 and 128. And uh, uh, we found just the more nice you can get more um, um, pre perception. For example. And if you, you choose um, 20, 22 lights, uh, 32 lights, yeah. So uh, if the person is working in the um, 20 meters, yeah, you can easy to have the detection. But uh, if you go for 128 lights, you can get a very clear detection of the person in 15 meters. So so it's, it depends on the, uh, your local, the places, what's the, the conditions. And about the light, um, you can see light, the most benefits is all offers 3D data in real time. And, uh, um, and the cameras, its features is uh, uh, very good, it's about the, the color. And uh, so this is the uh, advanced advantage of light is the accuracy, 3D shaped, and uh, uh, in the poor weather, or at light time is very strong and the poor in the color. And uh, however, the camera has what the uh, advantage is, is the light is, uh, is uh, less. So when they're compared to the together, you can see we have the very, very good performance uh, uh, in ITS. Yeah. Okay, we'll just in the page. Okay, this is our system in details. Um, a, for example, um, what we uh, we algorithm of um, three kind of agro, um, classification. One is the vehicle and the land vehicle and, and the pet persons. And uh, so, um, okay, this is the effective uh, 
um, perception distance. Actually, those legos, it can weigh to 150 meters. But uh, we lead to, um, to localize, this is a person, this is an animal, or this is a car. So the distance cannot reach the uh, 150 meters. So it's quite shorter than, and then it's the detection range. Yeah. So this is some specifications for your reference. Now this is about the tolerance of the our, our whole systems. Yeah. So we can get to this page. Yeah. Okay. This is our our, our what's what data what we show. Uh, data structure. Uh, will show the numbers, uh, object ID type, the longitude, latitude, and the length, whatever you like. It, but you can see it's totally 15 bit. Yeah, it's very really small. Okay, get the next page. Oh, so this is some um, 19 cases. This is Guangzhou, uh, this is Xuzhou, and this is Chongqing City. Yeah. This is an island, yeah. It's a, um, so we put the light and the camera around the island, so it shows the round, yeah. Okay, we we'll do the page. Okay, uh, this is our algorithm. If you have frozen, uh, when you are at the, the computer screen, that's you can find this. Now, this is the camera, and this is a light uh, lidar, and you can see they have the ID. This is transportation, yeah. But this is didn't show the speed or something. Yes, uh, actually we can just a picture, not, not show the, all the information. Yeah. So we get to next page. Okay. And uh, this is a uh, landing uh, case is in, in, in Guangzhou. So this is a highway and uh, it's connected to the Guangzhou airport. And um, so the customer not only uh, asked us to to need a way to add the, those functions, but uh, it's uh, to, to combine this um, uh, vehicle number to, to this, um, um, to, to the transportations. So put on the auto totals. So, uh, okay. So actually, uh, we standard office is the distance, speed, category, and the cross angle. And, and uh, if you like to use and um, take cameras to, to combine with the um, vehicle with just with just number is also uh, affordable. Yeah. Okay. To next. Okay. This is my conclusion. So let us see is what's uh, very well and uh, at light. Okay. And uh, is the to touch. Okay. This is more explanation to the one of the architectures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You can see around the world we have the of the um, how many units it's it need. Yeah. If we were sitting 128, so 2020, um, 22 uh, units is enough. And the two IPC, we also will offer the IPCs. Um, the model number and the three to the four units is not is enough. Yeah. So our engineer can offer the whole solutions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, LIDAR is, uh, okay, we mentioned the poor weather and the poor light condition. And this LIDAR is eye safe, high, high precision. Our LIDAR is normally um, plus and minus um, three centimeters. Okay. Um, this is maybe about uh, uh, other solution. Maybe we go, um, go through it first. Um, this is a, a smart working way. And uh, for example, uh, at, at if there, this is a city at light, the pole light is not so strong, and uh, so any persons into this area, and this lighter will trigger the LED light on the road, bling bling. So it will remind this um, car driver and some person in. So 
hope name to slow down. Yeah, that's a function. And uh, we here we have this radio um, in, in the Europe to the front. And um, actually in China, I think the over uh, over 20 cities have this kind of solution now. Yeah. Well, only speaking, it's very exciting. It's the first time I see this um, solution, which makes sense. Yeah, because normally uh, there is just motion detection, but motion detection is not so precise, right? So when you have a lidar, it makes sense and uh, precisely uh, find the person and light and the road. Interesting. Yeah, because a lighter have a good performance at night. Yeah. So, and uh, when you do the algorithm, it's also very easy. You use the camera and the pull at sight uh, at night. And uh, do the, when you do the algorithm, it's quite difficult. You will find this, this data is very quite huge. Yeah. Data and the data is very small. Yeah. So uh, it's more easy to do. Yeah. And in this case, um, yes, we also uh, have the in, in Guangdong province now. Um, for example, uh, you know, China have the ocean or have some rivers. And uh, in the flood season, um, the, the waters will grow up and the vessels, and um, because it carries the different um, cargoes and the low weight, uh, load weight is different. So the the vessels up or down is uh, um, not so certain, and uh, just now, just uh, by the experience of the captains, and uh, so uh, some is often happened is because the vessel's highest policy is the pole, yeah. So policy is quite too easy to hit the sprite, yeah. So in China, it happens often. So now have no effective the uh, system to. To protect this kind of the tragedy, so um, that's why then we have the, this kind of lidar. This lidar is a 15, 15 nanometers. It can reach to two ki uh, kilometer ki kilometers. So it's very uh, for the long range. So it's uh, this is a 2D lidar. So it can send the lights in in the 2D panel. So um, we can set it high um, to its highest uh, uh, limit. So when this pole, if you touch this, so it will trigger the system, send a voice or send something to warm these vessels. Yeah, because this is a vessel uh, have a very uh, high speed. Normally it need uh, one kilometers to take around. So this is um, two kilometers. So it can meet this kind of the, uh, requirement. Yeah. Okay, so. This is about vehicle measurement, yeah. Um, okay, we also have some radio in YouTube. And in this terms, we talked with uh, Huawei in, in China. Um, and in China, for example, uh, we how to judge this, uh, this trend is overload or not. not. Uh, actually, and uh, not only by weight, also by, by this um, measurement of the, this, uh, this trend. So our lightest purpose is a standard measurement. Uh, uh, and we also can stand how many um, wells it have. And uh, if the, the goes through um, a rate is on the road, yeah? So uh, the computer can very, very uh, fast calculate the rate to do devices, this, um, how many wells yeah, get data number to charge its overload or, or something, yeah? So this also uh, have many entities in China. Yeah. So that is a very interesting solution. Yeah. Indeed, you know, I have so many questions, but you know, I'll, I'll leave the questions for Q and A. Okay, next one. Oh uh, yes, we have many yes videos to show you in YouTube. Mm -hmm. What kind of tips something to find more solution mm -hmm. interesting? Yeah, check one of them. And they're, they're beautiful, yeah, especially you know the solution. Uh, it just it just looks nice. But mm -hmm. when you uh, understand the actual application, you realize how useful lidars are. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, like the uh, most use the um, advantage is the faster scan to get the very uh, real time and straight shape of the object. Yeah, so then we, we use the uh, fusing technology to do the transportation, is very and so and easy and fast. Yeah, and now we have some basic solution. 
Um, so I think um, if customer have some um, program and they can develop from our basic one and the very faster to to the delivery. Yeah. Very exciting. I mean, uh, Zoe, thank you very, very much. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have you know, plenty of questions that I would like to ask Zoe at the end of the um, uh, Q&A. But once again, very, very interesting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we'll get back to you, Zoe, maybe after a few minutes, after the Gary session, okay? Here we go. You're going to be the lead right now, okay? It's your part. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, ahead. everyone. I'm Barry. Uh, nice to meet you again. I'm here today to introduce our GHC tag, edge computer, and uh, some applications. First, when we talking about the transportation projects, from our experience, they all consist of uh, three major technical layers. They are cloud layer, marginal layer, and uh, terminal layer. Previ previously, most of our solutions were used in marginal layer. We are high capacity for computation and uh, distributed system is necessary. Flower series is a perfect for that MEC type of projects. At the same time, Recently, we also engaged more in terminal layer and uh, cloud layer. Where our in-vehicle embedded box computer has great advantage, gathering all the data from the vehicle and uh, analyze it without sending to marginal layer or cloud. Now, we have quite strong experience working on both private and government projects. Most of them are partial system with the future goals to fully integrate into one smart city type of development. For example, section of the expressway or major roads in the uh, large city. These projects are mostly focused on traffic server lines government service, as well as close to real-time uh, city mapping. Our GHC tech MEC equipment are the actual products of the roadside MEC platform and the cloud edge MEC platform shown in the picture. They are connected to uh, multiple roadside sensing devices including the cameras, lidars, and so on. They are used for the computer vision based video analysis of the projects, incidents, and uh, status on the roads. This system requires long-term vision and uh, modular architecture, which can allow companies to upgrade Certain nodes, for example, uh, can change the MPPC to uh, HPC or upgrade the sensors to a high precision LiDAR system. As an example, CVIS projects. Uh, CVIS means uh, the Corporate Active Vehicle Infrastructure System. It, uh, the, this project is very common globally and already a very standard solution. Because of the increasing network speed, as well as the low cost of cameras, more and more cities are doing the massive upgrade. As you can see, the important aspect of this project is the integration, which means all the equipment and the and the software have to work together at the highest performance. Next, I will introduce this application in details. Uh, next slide, this is a MEC application based on our product, Bravo 7302. 
It includes cameras, radars, 5G router, RSU, OBU, and so on, which can collect the roads and uh, vehicle information in real time. These data points include the vehicle's location, speed, distance, road traffic lights, and the pedestrian information. The edge computing platform Bravo 7302 analyzes through a dedicated algorithm and then transmits the, the analyzed data to the cloud platform and also feeds the analyzed data back to the RSU requirement. After the RSU device transmits the, device, uh, the received information to the onboard unit, OBU, it can make judgments on complex road conditions and uh, can provide suggestions and uh, predictions to a car driver or to the automatic driving system. Here we can see how this data is being shown by the software. The roadside RSU are online and the onboard OPU will receive all data from the roadside stations before entering the intersection. And the next is uh, another example of installation sites. Uh, we constantly traveling to customer sites together with them and uh, to help with development and setup. What is interesting is that our customers can see benefits of this system right away and uh, soon starting to copy the same solution for large scale development. In China, we have very fast growth of food delivery, car rental, or taxi platforms such as our DD Express and others. Some of these projects are done to improve safety and the speed of these platforms. Because the traffic analysis can allow them to reroute or avoid congestion. The next is uh, the self-driving car application. Despite self-driving cars are not yet used on the roads, technology is getting better very fast. These days, we can see more and more self-driving robots, tourist buses, and even metro train using same aspects of self-driving algorithm. To become self-driving, vehicle must be equipped with uh, plenty of devices like cameras, lidars, sensors, and uh, 4G or 5G router, and, uh, and so on. They work and communicate, and communicate with each other, allow the computer to uh, operate the motor vehicle automatically and uh, stably without any human active operation. The automatic driving system adopts advanced communication, computer, network, and control technology to achieve real-time and continuous control of the vehicle. Traditional driving uses the human brain and human eyes to drive on the road, but our self-driving cars rely on AI, visual computing, radar, surveillance devices, and the GPS to work together. Here is uh, how self-driving cars works. I think the key technologies related to autonomous driving system, including the, the environmental perception, environmental recognition, driving decision, and uh, driving control. These technologies achieved through the virus sensors and the complex AI computing. Here is an application. Our JHC Tech Edge Computing products used for self-driving car and roadside perception system 
in Shenzhen, future intelligent and connected transportation system in the Chuer Innovation Center. Here is a picture. There is our Bravo 7520 in trunk, used for the self driving. You can imagine how much data is uh, the edge computing device has to process in the real time. We are very proud that the tests are going well and our Bravo 7520 will be used as a brand in this project. Here is another application used for roadside. And this is an edge computing, our Bravo 7320 equipment with uh, NVIDIA graphical card. And uh, the next is the uh, ETC application used in our expressway with sensors, cameras, and the industrial computer. Our products mainly adopt a famous design compared to a commercial computer. They are industrial level product and the most stable and can work seven and 24 hours uninterrupted duty. So they are extremely rugged. And uh, they can adopt it to extra harsh conditions. <laughs> Our JHC Tech product adopt polyamine alloy and uh, standards steel reforms the structure so it has good heat dissipation. The different products designed with different compact size so it can compatible with the virus cabinet size. Our motherboard and card are PCB to PCB modularization design. Very convenient for maintenance or assemble and disassemble. Motherboard and the subcard have uh, rich I.O. functions. Very suitable for different field applications and the requirements. And some of our products have excellent anti-shock performance. So it's very, very suitable for uh, such as the in vehicle applications. Mm, for example, the railway transportation or highway transportation. Uh, for example, this is a core station and our commander 3921 used for electronic torque collection. Obviously, it can improve efficiency and uh, save lower cost. And the next, I will mainly introduce our GFC Tech uh, products. Now, first, we already have uh, our Bravo series um, on board. This, pro uh, this is a uh, Bravo 73. There are two. It can support uh, NX and NVIDIA GPU, such as uh, 1050 Ti, 1060, and 1070. Or the NX and AI Accelerator card. Our customers are very interested in this solution because the powerful GPU will help to process and analyze big data from uh, AI software or deep learning algorithm. Uh, also, it can support 4G and Wi-Fi module. The Bravo 7302 is equipped with a Skylake S or Kbake S processor. It's a high performance GPU box computer. The chipset is H110 or Q170. The Intel graphics card supports 1DP and 1HDMI. Uh, dual 4K display and the GPU support uh, 3DP and the 1 HDMI display. So I think the Bravo 7302 is uh, 
very good for the intelligent AI or video security and uh, machine vision. And the next is uh, Bravo 7521. It is a workstation grade edge computing system. It's powered by Intel, uh, Xeon P or Coffee Lake series processor. The chipset chip is the Intel 370 and the C246. Can support multiple PCIe expansion. Uh, it has a uh, five PCIe slot and support. Uh, so it can support uh, two GPU cards. It is uh, flexible to meet application requirements. Workstation level system performance and uh, rich expansion. It's an uh, industrial level product design, which is very suitable for industrial automation, AI edge computing, or the smart intelligent workstation. High precision machine vision and uh, self driving system. Uh, our Bravo 7521 uh, is uh, used for the self driving system now. The next is uh, Bravo 7520. The difference between the 7521 and the 7520 is the expansion slot and uh, the SATA number. Uh, you can see the 7521 has a uh, 4 PCIe slot and 4 SATA 3.0, but uh, uh, here 7520 only have 2 PCIe slot and uh, 2 SATA slot. And the next, uh, there are the IoT computers. I want to introduce them together because uh, I think some of these uh, features are all the same. First, this is uh, Commander 3920. Also has PCI or PCI slot. The PCI slot can support a uh, media GPU. Uh, we already have a full solution about the Commander 3920 with a GPU card. It is powered by uh, Intel ScanyPS or TPLAKS processor. The chipset is H110 and Q170. High performance and multiple I.O., multiple expansion slot. The two SATA disk and the one MSATA support the RAID 0 or RAID 1. And it is, is very convenient for you to do replacement. As those highlights, it is a very hot selling for ETC such as uh, 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 expert way projects. And the next is the Kamala 3921. Uh, the difference of the uh, 3921 and the 7, uh, 3920 is the expansion slot. The 3921 has a four, four expansion slot. There are two PCI and two PCIe, but the uh, 3920 only has two PCI or or two PCIe. And the next is uh, product is our commander 3610. You can see you can see this picture the 3610 has no expansion slot. So if you don't need to install any uh, cars uh, the 3610 will be a good choice for you. Uh, that's all for my introduction. Gary, thank, thank you. you. Okay, guys. Uh, so, you know, as always, Gary is uh, having so much information for you. At the same time, you know, his time is limited. Uh, today, we mostly focus on live relation. Uh, on the other hand, once again, get back to your uh, salespeople. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about tech, uh, new projects, uh, applications, or just case scenarios, Gary is always open always happy to support you okay so now we have a quick q a i personally have 
a bunch of questions to Zoe, but if anybody want to join, um, let me know. Any questions you guys have uh, to me, to Zoe, or to Gary, feel free to raise your hand to unmute the microphone. Me personally, uh, Zoe, are you here? Oh, actually, unfortunately, we have a Zoe losing her connection. Okay, so we'll record this and um, I'll ask Zoe to reply to your questions afterwards, okay, gentlemen? Basically, uh, I'm speaking, I had a number of questions um about the lidar tech especially about the cameras like you know what kind of cameras we can actually use uh, for transportation projects do we have to use particular cameras uh, particular unique you know configurations or we can get like any cameras you know hate vision Dahua, whatever your country is um using at the moment but we need to have like some very high-tech precision uh, cameras to work with uh lidar sensors other questions I had about um, 3D lidars. Uh, mostly over here in Taiwan and, or in China, we're using 3D for robotics, right? Um, Self-driving cars or self-driving vehicles, that sort of thing. I also see application as um, uh, for measuring weight. There's something very common in Russia or um, I say as market in Europe in terms of cargo uh, logistic measurements, right? So basically, you have this very fast um, custom clearance because LiDARs can sense, like I'm not sure whether they have the picture over here, but if you go to their uh, YouTube video, you will see amazing video of how they measure uh, weight of cargo. So it's not only measuring the dimensions of the vehicle, right, uh, with, you know, that sort of thing, but also can have a 3D kind of imaging. So you can see what type of cargo is inside. If it's a liquid, what's a volume, you know? For example, you're tracking um, oil tankers and you want to see, you know, how much oil is inside. Or you're tracking, for example, some dry cargo and you see how loaded or unloaded they are. In this case, it's quite useful, especially, you know, if there are big garment projects or big construction projects. Um, you can basically track whether somebody is stealing or uh, not delivering uh, goods properly. Here are some of my questions. I wanted to know more about them, how they work in winter. Uh, because I know we always talk about the high temperatures, you know, for Latin America, for uh, let's say India or Asia, Arab region, but we're not talking much about the Norway, Canada, Russia, or that sort of area, even Japan and Korea. What a minimum temperature requirements would be interesting this application was pretty exciting and i'm from st petersburg so you know it's always about boats and shipping and cargo uh but just understanding that lidar can be sensing a vehicle let's say boat two kilometers ahead that's incredible you know it's a small device you know two kilometers, basically you're covering the whole uh, river bank so I feel it's not only for the cargo, but may, imagine applications such as um, security, like a, not just custom security, but border patrol. Instead of you know having, besides having expensive you know Japanese or Korean uh, or even the freer American type you know uh, cameras on mountains, you can also have lidars and easily track any movement and basically see whether it's an animal or the person two kilometers ahead. That's beautiful, yeah? I think that's just amazing. Uh, I wanted to ask them more about the software. Oh, but this application is very cool. Like, it's the first time I see this, but I'll be suggesting to uh, all our partners and, you know, even for our own projects, this is just very, very interesting. I wanted to know more about their software. Um, so I mentioned that Relation has their software packages, you know, the work 
uh, with different MWPCs. They work with us, so you know we customize solutions for them. Hello, Roy. Yeah, I think. Roy. Hello. Roy, hey, how are you? Yeah, so sorry. I <laughs> Left you. Lost you. I'm just here for minutes. Yeah. Uh, what a question I can answer? Yes, yes, just good questions. Like at first, um frankly speaking, there are plenty of interesting applications we've seen. So I hope you know everyone will go to your YouTube channel and to look more at those uh videos, right? That they can see by themselves. Uh mm -hmm. especially I like the 3D lidars for cargo uh sensing, the weight, that sort of thing. That is amazing. Uh, and distance, I think beside boats to be used for like a border patrol and security. But I want to ask you um, first about low temperatures. What are uh, lowest temperatures LIDARs can work with? Oh, the temperature, if you choose the hyperstone state, it's minus 40 classes and um, um, to the 85 uh, classes. Really? Really? Yeah. Okay, so because long. this is the automotive grade. So it's very um standard the high and the low temperature if you choose a spring night and the first generation is a minus 20 and the maximum is 14 40 degrees so the um hot run yeah maybe some problems yeah interesting interesting but the question is like about the cameras um uh, do clients have to use no uh like any special cameras or or they can just get any cameras for their projects Cameras we uh, normally use the uh, JIK Haikang. Okay, okay. So basically, the, uh, there is no any special, just a normal hack vision is okay, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, then okay, what I want to say? Yeah, software-wise, you mentioned that you know they have some software packages, right? Uh, for yes. clients, mm -hmm. uh, this software is only for like a data sensing or for the whole project. Like for example, if somebody has the project like this you know, monitoring uh, transports, right? Do mm -hmm. they have to uh, build their own software and uh, integrate with yours or you mm -hmm. or your product has like a full package, you know, just buy a mm -hmm. software and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's full package, yes. Actually, landing case in uh, Netherlands and the IPC is uh, use the <laughs> GHT is this computer, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So we shipped it together, yeah. Uh, computer's model may be different, yeah. Because uh, it's depending on, uh, you like to fuse into two LIDARs data and three LIDARs data. So, yeah, uh, we recommend a different model, yeah. Okay, okay, exciting. So basically, it's full package, including the software. Nice, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely something to look into that. Um, <laughs> so I saw as well, like, a. Uh, uh, well, the cargo, I was wondering, so again, so because you can measure not only the dimensions, but you can also see the 3D image of what's inside the cargo, right? Uh, yes. Oh. This radio just uh, show um, fit because this is a light that fits on the top. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's the top of the video of the, the track. If you fix this light on the side, yeah, so you stand it, you can get the wheels, the axis, then distance, yeah, everything of the information of the tank. My question is, uh, if it's a 3D LiDAR, right? To have mm -hmm. a, a 3D LiDAR, mm -hmm. but to have full 3D image of the car, where do we need to install LiDARs? Do you repeat your question? Yes, like um, I see this like a 2D picture. 2D, yeah. yeah. But okay. uh, how can we get a 3D picture of the car? Where should we install LiDAR? Ah, uh, yeah, to, actually we have a video maybe in the YouTube. Yeah, you, you, you can know. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Uh, then back to like your partnerships, like I know that you know, you're working on many of the projects in Asia, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. probably what kind of partners you normally work with? Do you work with some sort of distribution companies or system integration? Let's say what kind of partners you are looking for? Oh, okay. That's a very good question. And uh, um, actually, um, for example, um, you know the ITS project you normally uh, from government, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I think uh, maybe some um, many so many 
many need for cooperation. I, for example, for the Netherlands landing case, actually, talking with the three companies, yeah, I think the one company is the consulting company, be the based in the government directly. The one company is a high technology company, so they graduate from high school and in the computer science. So we have already the, the whole kit. So I think it's from us very, very quickly, yeah. And um, um, when they use it, so if their government asks sound um, to add it more, more functions into the system, so they can develop the, the our uh, algorithm, yes. So, so normally, so um, locally, maybe they have a um, very um, capability to do with the government, yeah. Um, okay. And uh, so the, if they have some technology inform, um, ability, it's very also appreciate, yeah. That's it. So basically more like um, engineering or the firms like integration companies that have, uh, that own the project, right? As you say, yes, you yes, they have the need of general information. In right. Vitex, we are telling how to do, how to do. Yeah, for, uh, we have the instruction for them, but you can <laughs> faster get what we are talking about. Yeah, it makes sense. They have to be professionals, right? So uh, if there's the, mm -hmm. if there's those guys who actually uh, maybe have their own solution or their own consulting, right? And they're looking for a technology partner. So you provide LiDAR to them, you provide maybe some, you know, PC package software. And you ask, mm -hmm. uh, how easy is integration? If, for example, we have, you know, like partners in India or um, Spain or Turkey, uh, mm -hmm. you have this project, they know how mm -hmm. to be customized, right? How, like, how easy is to integrate your solution? Uh, quite, it's very easy. And um, because um, they buy the whole solution from us, mm -hmm. firstly, um, well, to put our algorithm into the um, IPC first, and uh, we are combined with the um, camera and the LiDAR together. The user, uh, we have uh, already a provision. Mm -hmm. So we send it to them um, and send it to them. And in the local, we accept and we have uh, uh, um, the instruction told them how to fix the, the LiDAR, and then told me um, it, it's better to test those pictures and each light pole, um, pole how far the distance, yeah, and the how, um, what's the heat, like to fix the LiDAR heat. So we are calculate, yes. Mm -hmm. So we can calculate what, what to do to them. Yes. Not, so, not so difficult. What's your major market right now? I remember uh, you have some, you know, partners in Europe, right? As well, like uh, yeah. Finland. So um, you guess mm -hmm. on that market. Uh, how, how do people can find you? I uh, should be talk, you know, with Eva or you, Zoe, directly. What they have to maybe call your office in Europe, or like mm -hmm. how they how they should communicate with uh, Lation. Uh, yes, um, because now we have some with sellers. Um, and um, in French, we have our own uh, salesman in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he can offer some local because he will have a strong technology background. Yeah. And in other countries, we uh, have the resellers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in non um, strategy speaking, and we are very likely to a more local company to the, the local support. Yeah. Oh, I if see. Mm -hmm. Japan, Japan, and the chance, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so in United, now we have the very with um, have a very good in Korea, yeah, have a very good uh, seller to help us, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we do many some uh, robotic companies in that company, yeah. And uh, in India market, actually now we're discuss discussing one uh, distributor, a very good that the algorithm, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's also a kind of situation way. Okay, so you have basically you no know, partners in India, Europe, you know, uh, Asia, right? So okay, in this um, case. Yes. Uh, Cases, like, you know, yes. um, yeah, gentlemen, if anybody has any questions to Zoe, I mean, of course, all this information will be provided to you. You can also ask your sales uh, for contact with Zoe, and she can help navigate and uh, tell you who to contact in the in your particular market. But at the moment, so far, anybody has questions? 
Yes. If not, we'll be closing in. Okay, once again, uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, please send your questions to yourselves, and I'm sure Zoe will reply you know, to you directly or through their partners, okay? I have plenty of questions to Zoe afterwards, and this uh, video will be uploaded later online, as well as presentation will be sent to you uh, via email. Once again, thank you all for joining, and I wish you a great day. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Thanks for all time. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Okay.